How you doing, everybody? This is Chris Free and Bennett of the Vancouver Film School Storyteller Studio Podcast. I have an amazing guest today. I'm so excited to meet you because I'm a fan. I have awesome. the one and only Miss Julie Vu is in our studio. Julie is an eclectic content creator, model, makeup artist, actress, up and coming thought leader. Uh, I would say even in, in a lot of ways, you deserve the title of activist. Um, I think you are a voice and ambassador uh, for the trans movement. Um, your story is unbelievable. Uh, welcome to the show, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. That was quite the introduction. Wow. You are quite the woman. This is, I, I really mean yes. that when I say this. I, your story is just, this is called the Storyteller Studio, and we really look at all the multifaceted ways that stories reveal themselves in an industry. And you are one of those guests that really touches on a whole bunch of areas. Um, can we start and go back first? I want our audience to, to know where, for me, you made a breakthrough where I first discovered your story and heard it, um, was the, the Canada, the Miss Universe pageant. Yes. That's unbelievable. Do you mind sort of catching everyone up and telling a little bit about that story and, and why that was such a significant moment for you? The pageant? Yeah. Yeah, so at the beginning of my transition, I really looked up to this one trans woman who was from Vancouver. Her name was Jenna Takalova, and she was actually the first Canadian to be on this pageant, in this pageant. Um, and I really looked up to her and I was like, oh my God, I would die to be a part of this pageant. It's so like big and big time. beautiful women on there. And I honestly just wished and prayed that one day I'd be on that stage. And, you know, seven, eight years later, there I was on that stage. So it was a huge um it was a huge thing. Would you have thought seven, eight years ago, where we were culturally, um, some might say we were at the beginning of a more general acceptance of the trans movement, of LGBTQ issues. Um, what was your perception of where Canada and world culture was on that topic seven, eight years ago? Did you think that that would even be possible? I honestly didn't think it would be possible. Back then, it was so taboo being different, so taboo being gay, trans, or whatever. So I never thought, you know, in a million years that we'd get this far. Slowly but surely, though. Growing up, was your support infrastructure from friends or family there? How, can you tell me about that? What was that like for you? So growing up from, you know, a very traditional family, it was so hard to be myself and... My parents are both from Vietnam, so they're very old school, mm -hmm. very traditional. So when I came out to them in grade eight as like a gay male, it was like the horrible, it was a horrible thing. Um, they didn't accept me for who I was, and it was just not like a good time for me. I was in a very dark space. I was suicidal. Society itself was just so crazy back then, even in high school. Um, there was like only one gay person in high school. And like now there's just so, you know, so many people out there who are different and so open. Was there a particular, you know, let's look at film and television for a minute. I feel like in the last few years in particular, we have seen uh, a swell in characters and actors right. who are helping to really lead that, that, that trans visibility. Um, who were your heroes? Who were the people that from, from that perspective were giving you the confidence to, the confidence you have now? I yeah. mean, your story's amazing. Right. Did anybody in particular help drive that and, and give you that hope when it might not have always seemed possible? Honestly, not really. There wasn't a lot of, there, there wasn't a lot of great LGBT representatives on TV that much. One show I watched was probably America's Next Top Model, and there was that yeah, right. Jay, the, the gay male model, and that was great. But that, like, honestly, not really. Um, and so I kind of wanted to start YouTube to be that person who wasn't there um, on social media and on TV and in media. So, And YouTube becomes for you uh, and for thousands and thousands, millions of followers, mm -hmm. a place for you to chronicle yeah. this, this transition to, to your identity. Um, wow. That yeah. was, I mean, you really 
you you put it all out mm-hmm. there. I think that's a, an extraordinarily brave, if not appropriate, way to take what YouTube can do. Did you set out and did you think it would be as big as it was when you began to tell that story on YouTube? Absolutely not. I what, did you th- what did you think would happen? I didn't think anything would happen of it. Honestly, like maybe two, five views, not like too many. And really? before you know it, like it just exploded and everyone was like shocked and it was like a huge thing, a huge deal. I turned to YouTube because I couldn't find the support I did in real life. Um, my schedule was just basically go to school, come back home, lock myself in my room. My parents were very strict, no extracurricular activities allowed. You know, you go to school and come back home. That was it. And so I couldn't connect with a lot of people in high school. So I went home and locked myself in my room and created this like online world in my room where I can connect with people who are like me and share my stories to people who can resonate with me. So honestly, I built this whole thing in my room. In my tiny room. Can I add, I want to talk about identity for a minute. I want to understand and maybe I hope you'll take my unfamiliarity and Absolutely. probably more my ignorance with it and, and teach me a little bit. For you, and I don't know if it is in your experience, it's the same with many people who have uh, have transitioned the way you have. Did you always know you were Julie Vu? Um, is Julie, I mean, when I meet Julie Vu, the Julie Vu that I know and the Julie Vu that I see on, on social media mm-hmm. is this beautiful, confident, poised, incredibly articulate uh, person. And you're, you're like any actor that I've had on the show that um, you project such a confidence and a comfort in that role. Wow. I wonder where did Julie come from? Was she always there? She has always been there. It, she's always been there and Honestly, it's just so crazy to me. I can't believe what I see now, like looking myself in the mirror. I'm like, oh my God, I never thought that I would turn out to be the way, the way I am today. It's crazy. Um, definitely, I think the hardships I've been through has definitely helped me shape me into this confident woman that I am today. Like at the early stages, stages of my transition, it was so hard for me. Like I was so self-conscious. I was so unhappy. It's definitely a journey that I went through, you know? all the struggles I went through to um, become this confident woman that I am today. Do you think that in identity, when we look at, um, you know, we're going to talk in a minute about this short film project that you've been working yeah. on, which I'm really excited about. This is, um, is that your breakthrough moment as an actor or is, have you done any acting before this? I didn't think you had. A little bit. You, you dabbled in I, it. I dabbled in it, yeah, But, but this, sure. this one in particular, which we'll talk about, really, I think, in my estimation, is, is wh- why people should start to really take you seriously as an actor. Yeah. Um, was So if Julie was always there in terms of someone that you felt was, was the, that real you, is it a reasonable assertion that you were acting like someone else in the meantime? Absolutely. Yeah? Um, the inside was always Julie, but mm-hmm. the outside wasn't. So I just had to reach to the surface by physically transforming. I mean, the way you talk about that, uh, first, it's, you know, I'm, I'm in awe of it. And second of all, you, there are so many elements of even just that answer where, you know, I've read some great interviews with Daniel Day-Lewis or Meryl Streep, mm-hmm. where they describe a process of trying to become someone mm-hmm. that, that's not far off that. And I have this theory that if and when the trans community really breaks into mm-hmm. the, the, the acting and the filmmaking world, we're going to see some of the most incredible performances Absolutely. ever because Absolutely. I think nobody understands that better than you. Absolutely. And, and people who have gone through that. I'm, I'm excited by that. I'm seeing a lot of it now on a, on a few shows. Orange is the New Black. Yes. Um, we're seeing, I think, Spider-Man, the new film, uh, Homecoming, um, had a first supporting actor, trans okay. uh, uh, actor. Um, it's becoming more and more mainstream if you'll you'll forgive that that term what does it mean now then for someone like think of it this way what i what i found uh, interesting about identity is i grew up let's use the superhero genre if you'll forgive me did you read any comics were you into that growing up at all was that something you're ever interested in not too much comics no to me my first experience with identity and secret identities was through superheroes Mm. um i remember peter parker Mm-hmm. Spider-Man being this character that was this awkward, introverted uh, teen, right. and but secretly when he put on this mask, he right. became Spider-Man. Right. And so, and you know, this goes as far back as as you know, you know, 1940s. There, mm-hmm. there have been superheroes f- 
juxtaposing their secret true identities for as long as we can remember. And we we love that. Yeah. We embrace that. We get that they do this. And yet right in front of us is this really important subculture in our community of people who are literally doing that in real life. And it has taken us this long yeah. to really wrap our heads around that. Why do you why do you think that is? Does that is that just life? Is there a reason for that? Do you ever you know, what's your sense of optimism when you when you consider that? How do you feel about all of that? Um, I think, I don't, I don't know, just people are so close-minded back in the day, just very traditional, and, you know, a man is supposed to be with a woman, and a woman's supposed to be with a man, and just, you know, it's what you've been raised with, I guess. Yeah. I think times are different now, definitely. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Amen. And, yeah, just... I think in the future moving forward, there's going to be a lot of acceptance because the older generation are going to pass on oh, yeah. and like it's going to be great. But I just honestly think that, yeah, just growing up, times were different back then. When you look at what you're doing on social media, you are um, you're very popular. A lot of people look to you. And this is where in this new world, you are also called an influencer. Yes. And influence is a really important part of identity if you're an actor you've got to convince your audience mm -hmm. um, that you're 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 delivering and telling the story you're, you can you can nail this part as an influencer what's your objective when you go out to create this kind of content what's your what's your approach to being a content creator and influencer right now um you're good at it yeah how'd you how'd you manage that honestly just being by, being myself and really sharing the things i love and that i truly believe in um, just living my daily life and just putting in a good message to the world and um, yeah. Do you think that your audience wants something and you are creating content for them or is Julie Vu's objective each day to set out and deliver the content you want to create? Which, who do you feed first, your audience or your own creative impulses? I think it's a little 50-50. Mm -hmm. Um, on YouTube, I really share, you know, my story, my message, and everything that I've been through. Yeah. And that's helped so many people. Um, you know, I've created some of these videos a few years ago, a long time ago, and people still bring it up saying, wow, like that video really changed my life. You're the one that inspired me to transition. You gave me the courage. I really look up to you. Um, so in that context, it's like really nice, but you know, I have to live my own life and that's what Instagram is for. Um, yeah, I share my daily life and the things I wear and the things I do on Instagram. Would you have thought, I don't know, seven years ago? I mean, the pageant dream mm -hmm. is an extraordinary crazy. one. And, and you made it happen. And yeah. I would say even in the last probably five, six, seven years as well, there's been this explosion of social media content creators, of influencers mm -hmm. who are just as popular, sometimes more so. Absolutely. Would you have even thought when you were really young that this was even a career path? I, I Absolutely mean, not. What's your reaction to that? Do you think it's sustainable? Do you think it'll last? And I don't mean you, Ugh. I mean this whole, the architecture of that media. I never thought that the whole social media influencer thing was going to be so big. Yeah. Like if people knew, people would jump on that bandwagon a long time ago, right? Sure. But honestly, when I first started making YouTube and being on social media, that was never like the goal. Mine was just to share stuff that I thought that was important to me and important for the world to know, like to educate people. Um, I didn't know I, it could be like a career. Absolutely not. And I don't think it's... Is it hard? I know there can it, be long hours. I think people glamorize it. Is it. Hard. it I think what's, it is hard. What's it really like? It's a lot of like isolation in your own room. Like sometimes I wish I had like a regular job where I can go to an office nine to five and just interact with people. You would think that I'm a very like outgoing extrovert, right? Yeah, But I'm I not. Would. I'm like honestly socially awkward. I don't know how to communicate. Really? I guess. Because think about it. I film myself and I stay in my room and in my house and just edit by myself. I'm not around people all the time. I'm not. No, it's really, it's tough. Do you find that the. Um, I'm an introvert. That's really interesting. I, yeah. I, I do believe that, though, because I've met a lot of artists that are creative types mm -hmm. that will. That I don't think that's unusual. Yeah. Um, but I do think, you know, there's an element of content creation in particular for social media mm. where right now I notice uh, uh, there are what's the phrase I'm like, I was about to say lookalikes it's not lookalikes you've got a you've got an indus, you've got a, a, a certain type of viewer that you're tailoring to mm -hmm. um, you do a lot of stuff on makeup you're incredibly mm -hmm. 
um, knowledgeable and you, you give great insight into that. You don't necessarily always give, um, you don't necessarily break out of that. Um, your audience seems to like and want that. And I've seen similar types of YouTubers, um, some as popular as you, some not as popular as you that, that do that. Do you all feed off each other? I mean, is it kind of like, you know, we had we had a, a news anchor in here the other day and we were talking about the, the role of different networks and how news can mm -hmm. be very similar no matter right. where you go. Absolutely. How, how does that work for you? Is there do you are you trying to differentiate? Or are you trying to satiate that audience and what they want? Um, we try to, but it's kind of like the same community, same industry, same things, just like the news. So, I mean, I try to, but it's so hard because everyone's just so creative these days. And honestly, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I'm the first one to like really document everything. I started this video, um, it was titled Gay Guy Sees Transgender Vagina. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was like- I'll, And I'll put a link to that, yeah. A really popular video. And yeah. then, you know, people saw it got like over three, four, five million views. And people were like, oh my God, there's something here. We need to jump on this bandwagon. So then I started seeing videos of like, oh, lesbian sees gay penis and a lesbian sees another trans penis. And like everyone just started seeing everyone's private parts, trying to make it educational. I'm like, I started this. Yeah, that's and right. And now everyone that's right. is like doing it. And we're talking and millions of views. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that and I think sometimes you can capitalize in social media like nothing else. Mm -hmm. You can capitalize I don't know if you call that a trend or um what is that word? That thing that you did there, you understood that there was maybe a a moment, a human moment mm -hmm. that when that happens for the first time, something really authentic transfers. Mm -hmm. You were the first to do that. I guess are you you're probably very proud of that, but at the same time do you feel pressure to to continue to find new ways to create content on social Absolutely. How, like how do you do that what's a honestly i took a little hiatus this year i took a break from youtube because it just got like too much for me the pressure and just like i'm honestly almost running out of ideas to to film content like i just like i've literally done everything have you got management or any representation currently no how that should i'm astounded by that i mean i yeah. see some of your numbers and i see the appeal um i you could argue that maybe Looking is part for a of a manager. If you, you want to be a manager, huh? that, that could be part <laughs> of your, your, your success. Yeah. Um, and then at the same time, um, I'm just so in awe that you, uh, you haven't, you haven't sought to go that route. And there is, I think when I watch your stuff, uh, I knew you were coming on the show. So I, I, right. I became more familiar with it. I went, I don't know if, uh, if there's an authenticity and a purity to it. And I, it doesn't feel like there is a ton of management. And maybe that's why your audience really resonates with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've always, like, people have reached out to me, like, left, right, center every single day. Like, hey, I need you. Come to our network and this. I just, like, I, I don't think I can. I've been doing really good, you know, by myself. But I th do think I can do better. But it's just finding the right person is so tough. I've heard so many horror stories. And I'm, like, so scared to get myself into any kind of mess. Yeah. Where is Julie Vu one year from now? three years from now and five years from now when you close your eyes and you picture what's possible and i don't ask this of a lot of guests but i think i really could with you you're someone who seems to 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 do that fairly easily with success what, what's your answer to that so one year five years and what one three and five one three and five okay um in one year i hope to collaborate with bigger beauty companies um this year i had collaborated with sephora I saw that. Yeah, it was a huge thing. It was great so, for you. Amazing you. for Sephora. Amazing. Yeah, I think they're definitely going the right path. I yeah. Think every company is doing the same thing, just making sure they are inclusive. They want, you know, to be LGBT friendly. Because I think it's good for their business, right? Do you worry that uh, we'll come back to the three and the five in a okay. minute? But on that vein, I did want to ask you about it. I'm glad you mentioned it. Great for Sephora. Great for yeah. their brand. Very do happy. you do beyond association? with you, your identity, what you stand for, your influence. Um, is there more they need to do, a company needs to do to be there? Is it enough to embrace it and make them a part of their uh, ambassadorial roster? Or, you know, I guess what I'm getting at is, do you see a future where eventually companies are whitewashing or greenwashing, you know what I mean by that, where they are not necessarily fully embracing that? internally the way they are externally for the sake of, a, of an image mm -hmm. how convinced were you why did you decide to to partner with sephora what what convinced you that that was also good for you not just them um 
Well, their platform is really big, right? Yeah. Sephora is huge. So to have that kind of Global. opportunity. Yeah. So to have um, that partnership with Sephora, just that, that name is just really, you know, I shop at Sephora. I've always shopped at Sephora and I think it was just on par. And lined up with your values. With my values and stuff. But, you know, sometimes I do look at these companies with a side eye and really think, like, are they really um, inclusive? You know, um, just this pride, 2019, like every company has a rainbow flag in front of their store. And just like, it's like, why? Yeah, now? right. Why not? Like, everyone's just doing it. Every store has like, love is love. I'm like, really? Like, uh, I don't know. It's, that's what I mean. I wonder I if um, this is the new version of the, the greenwashing, as they say. Yeah. Are companies really pro-environment? Are they saying it? Um, in a way, you kind of have to go through that in order to. to really get there. So it's, right. it's the growing pains. It's a good sign. Right. But I think now may, maybe we're even there. We're wondering, okay, beyond the fact that you've convinced Julie Vu to stand beside your brand, mm -hmm. how do we really know you're embracing that, mm -hmm. that openness and that tolerance? And um, I really commend you for doing it. And, I, and not to say that Sephora is not. I want to be really clear. I think that's yeah. really outstanding that they're doing it. Um, but I thought, what an interesting sign of the times. We probably wouldn't even right. have seen that two years ago. Absolutely not. No, that's, that's yeah. uh, once again, you're at the forefront of doing something really neat. Yeah, so that. three years from now or five years, okay. where would you love to be? Three years, I would love to have my own cosmetics line. Yeah? Yeah. And five years, probably be more into acting. So I can add entrepreneur to your, to your business yes. card title as yes. well. Is your, is your transition to identity ever complete? I ask that as someone who's mm. also going, I think I've changed a lot yeah. in 10 years and 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, is, are we all undergoing a transformation, do you think? Or do, is, do you finally feel that Julie Vu is here and now it's just about the experiences you rack up along the way? Or are you still on any kind of a, a, a journey, both figuratively and literally? I think we're always changing and we're always growing. I don't think that I'm ever going to stop transitioning. Um, I think it's still a process that we go through. Yeah. People always ask me like, okay, so you're done this whole surgery thing. Like you literally finished your transition. So are you still no. transgender or are you like a woman now? Like you're a woman out to me. Um, and that's like always been a hot debate. Like to, are you transgender? Are you a woman now? Like transitioning means you're going through the transition. Right. But now you're done the transition. You're a woman now. You're not transgender anymore. So why do you keep calling yourself transgender? That's an argument, right? Where um, are you on that argument? That's actually a really intelligent point. I hadn't yeah. even thought of that. Where are, what, what's the answer to that? Honestly, what's the correct answer? It really depends on the person. I can consider myself as a woman or a transgender woman. It doesn't, like, I'm not hiding who I am. And mm -hmm. I'm not running from my past. So I'm not going to just turn my back on my people and the people in the community. Um, so if you want to call me a transgender woman, I am a transgender woman. Or if I'm just a woman, I am just a woman. I'm both. And I embrace that and, you know, I still label my videos as transgender woman, this and that, um, because people need to know the information. You sound extraordinarily patient and understanding with other people's uh, ignorance and probably lack of, of those things as well. Um, that's, a real, that's a real credit to your character. Um, you must have your days where there are people and there are things oh, floating in, 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 in popular culture and ideas you hear on the street or things you're even seeing on television. Misrepresentation must be a frustrating thing for you when you see it. Are we getting better as a culture? Honestly, I think we are, but I'm not sitting where you're sitting. Do you think we're getting better? More tolerant, more accurately depicting the, the struggle and the reality of, of, of where you are? I think we are, but slowly but surely. Yeah. Like, it's definitely a slow... Um, journey um, but we often don't hear yeah we do we are but there's still a lot that needs to be done for sure um, United States like surgery and stuff is still very hard for my sisters and brothers um, and people oh man in the other countries it's like hell right oh, I can only imagine I no, don't it's think horrible. I think I'm very privileged um, and I'm very blessed to live where I do and yeah, live the life that I do. Um, talk to me about Abdullah Mardi. We have a, a, a student here at Vancouver Film School, an incredible student, 
and a short film called Lost and Found. Yes. And this is um, one of your first roles in yeah. this. Can you tell us about this role? Uh, what I'm going to do later is I'm going to link to this in the podcast so okay. people will be able to see it. Um, what a really awesome project. Tell us how it all came together and tell us about the part you play. Yeah, so our group of friends went on a little road trip to Kelowna and on our way back I got an email from Buffer Festival saying, hi, we'd like you to come back. So start, you know, cooking up some ideas and create a film for us. We want to see some, you know, top notch stuff this year from everyone. So I was like, oh, my God, guys, what should we do? And knowing Abdallah, he's in school, film school right now, and uh, he's a pretty creative person. So I reached out to him and was like, hey, do you want to create something with me? And he was so happy, super excited. And yeah, we came up with this idea or he mainly did. Yeah. Um, and then he, you know, pitched the idea to me about me detransitioning for this role. Basically, it's two best friends, both named John. My birth name was John. Right. So he was like, why don't we both be Johns and you detransition? I don't know how you feel about that. And initially I was like, oh, my God, I can't. Like, I I transitioned to get away from, you know, of course. that appearance and that life. Um, so going back to that was kind of like daunting a bit. Um, but I know that to be like a good actor, you have to do roles that you probably will not be comfortable with. So, yeah. I, so I agreed and, um, or roles that make you uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and this sounds no like makeup. the ultimate one for mm -hmm. you. Wow. So why'd you do it? I mean, I, I'm that, that once again, another actor to really right. having the guts to do that. Why, yeah. what, what made you say yes? That must've been a little bit. Honestly, I love a good challenge and as tough as, as that was. I was willing to do it to really share the message because so much people are going through what lost and found is all about. Mm -hmm. So I really, it was important for me to share that message and to let people know that, you know, the struggle is real. It's beautifully shot and you don't, f you don't come across as inexperienced as a, as an actor. Tell me about, when you watch it, or have you watched it fully and, and yeah, seen it? Yes. Are you, do you critique yourself? Is this something you're, like, do you watch your content you create on YouTube? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. What's your self-critique of it from, uh, as, as an actor, not just an influencer? What, what do you think, how you did? Definitely always room for improvement, always. <laughs> um, honestly, I just didn't like the way I looked. I was like, oh my God, this like, just get it done and, you know, over with. Like, I just uh, wanted the time to pass by fast but definitely improvements for sure did you feel coming out of it how did you prepare for this um do you, and i don't think you have any formal acting training do you have you taken any any professional like training a little bit a little bit but then i stopped for my surgery so i just dropped out um you, you come across as very natural at it how did you prepare in a way were was it a role i guess maybe you already knew how, am i putting words in your mouth when i say that um no I agree. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So it was a bit of like emotional recall, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like too. It wasn't too tough. Like I'm I, not too shy about it. Like I'll just, it's very easy just to play, you know, a boy, just act brain dead. <laughs> I mean, I did that all my life, you know, growing up and trying to be in the yeah. closet and hiding. It's it's just about like, it. It's just yeah. you know, yo, yeah. But do it with She's you so know, hot. like you do know, it with like fashion. Yeah. All in high school, that's what I did. So, I, I guess it, in a way, it was like a natural thing for me. But I wasn't overly masculine in the film, anyways. Yeah, that makes sense. Like no, no, I wasn't like overly masculine. It was just like myself, like how I was back then. Like I wasn't even like a masculine boy to begin with. You know, just very soft spoken and. There's a there's a book out that. Uh, some some <laughs> male friends of mine are reading right now called Backbone okay. and they're talking uh, this book is is essentially trying to help rewrite the the modern male and modern help male. helping us to evolve into a more sophisticated and um, non brain dead if you will version Sorry. that that we're no no I think you're I think you're you're dead right um I think the uh, it's interesting that you say that and I think there is also at the same time that we're going through this conversation about identity and transformative identity even m males I think are having you know in that in the wake of of the me too movement 
um, in the yeah. in the issues surrounding Times Up and and pay equity and and equity gender equity in general. I think there is also a moment where men, whether they're conscious of it or not, are trying to figure out what is the correct identity for the modern male in 2020. Um, and I'm wondering if you, you know, as you, I know you said that jokingly, but you must have a unique position on male female relations in general. Um, you have an experience that nobody could, could, or very few people could really understand. Right. Is there hope for men? Are we, are we, is the Me Too movement uh, going to launch us into a new place? Is this gonna, is history just gonna repeat itself? Why have, why have we so systemically as a gender always been a failure at some of the most obvious, easy successes we could have in terms of treating women better? What, what's your position on that? Is that too big a question? I don't think I'm that smart enough to answer this question. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, sorry if it was a little confusing. We can talk too. about makeup and concealers. Yeah. But, ooh, um, I just thought you must. Re I think what do you see? I think what I was trying to get at is, you know, when you see you, it's kind of like there's this great movie, What Men Want. Or sorry, What Women Want. Mel Gibson was in this movie a long time ago. And uh, he, he hits his head and he wakes up one morning and all of a sudden he can read women's minds. Okay. And so he knows what they're thinking. And so, I th so I think maybe in a roundabout way, what I'm wondering is you, you know, you sit in, 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 in lots of social situations. And I think your experience and your unique, you, you have probably a superpower of understanding the other gender probably in a way. Or maybe you don't. Are you just as confused and perplexed by oh, them I as do. a woman? I, I'm curious what you think about that. Um... You seem to really get male. I, I, I know you do because you're right. We do. Oh, I do. We are brain Best dead. Best of both worlds. We are brain dead. Um, we do, you know, Me Too is a perfect example of that. How, how did we miss, how did for decades, did we continue to think we could behave and carry on like that um, and that this would just never stop, right? Like. Well, I just hope with everything that's going that, you know, people are, people will smarten up a bit and, you know, learn from everything that's going on and that, you know, it's, it is a huge issue and it's not okay. Um, That's a good answer. I, I don't blame you for that. It was kind of a complex question on my part, and I apologize. Tell me Sorry. about acting again. Would you Sorry. go back and do more of it? Was it a fun? Absolutely. You liked it? I love acting. I think that was, like, probably one of my biggest passions was, like, acting. I started YouTube, um, my YouTube channel, because I wanted to see how it was on screen. I've always been so shy. Um, to hear my own voice or to see myself on screen. So I started a YouTube channel um, doing the, this series called John and Julie. Yeah. Where I would be John and then I would like wrap a towel around my head and become Julie, this other person. And these two were like dating and these two personas. Um, and who knew that down the road that I would actually become Julie. So it's just like a really crazy thing. Yeah. Um, but I've always been so passionate about acting. I was. Um, the who main... do you like? Who do you? Which actors do you love? Who do you? Who do you gravitate towards? Um, honestly, I'm really into Bollywood. Oh yeah. I'm obsessed with Bollywood. <laughs> I think I know more about Bollywood than than I do Hollywood. Why do you love that Bollywood? So I mean, mm -hmm. millions of people do. There's nothing yeah, wrong with it. But I what? Just, why? It's so loud. It's so vibrant. So colorful. And it's just so cheering. Like, like the energy is just totally different. Yeah. I love it. I've been to India four times now, and I just, I love it. You've traveled a lot of places. Where um, where do you find yourself most happy? Where do you find yourself most relaxed? Um, when you ask, like, when people ask me, like, what's your dream vacation? You wouldn't see me on, like, a white sunny beach with, you know, a pina colada in my hand. It would be in, like, the crazy, hectic markets of India, honestly. That's where I find most peace when it's, it's most chaotic. Are you a spiritual person? Religious not really. person? No, reflective? I'm not religious. No, I just like to experience different cultures. I think yeah. I'm very blessed to live in Vancouver. And, you know, I'm just, I just feel so privileged. And, you know, and when I go to these countries, you know, it's very, it's a humbling experience to, to travel to these areas. Would you go back into pageants? You you are a real beacon and, a, and an inspiration to a right. lot of women who who, just like you had someone that you you saw. I I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing that for hundreds or thousands of women yeah. that want to do it. Yeah. Um, but there must be a real. I mean, it's uh, everything I'm told from models who have done pageants is that 
it is hard work. It is hard work. You've got to maintain a real lifestyle. Yes. Um, does it does it work in parallel to what you're doing on social and and and, and in film television? Or did you enjoy it? Would you stay go back to it ever? Pageantry. Yeah. Honestly, I don't come from a background of pageantry. I honestly have no experience. So you, really? So you just wanted no, to do it? No, I had it. zero experience. I'm just like a YouTuber and I applied for it and I guess I was chosen out of Canada to do it and I was amazed. You know, in my friend group, I'm always like the one that's always dolled up. Like this is my everyday face. There's no day that I don't wear makeup. My hair outfits are always on point. And so when I traveled to like Thailand to do this pageant, everyone was like me. And like, it was like, oh wow, everyone's waking up at 3 a.m. To do, to, to do their makeup, everyone's dressed to the nines. I'm like, oh, these are all Julie Vu's in different countries. It was like, <laughs> it was shocking. Wow. Yeah, because you know, my friend's like, I can never wear that much makeup every single day. Girl, you're crazy, right? I'm always like ready to go, like I'm going to a fashion show. So it was a great experience. Would I do it again? Probably not. I don't think it's my thing. Been there, done that? Yeah, I just really wanted to experience it. And honestly, when I was there, it wasn't like, I need to win this. It was just there to experience it. I wanted to get to know all the other women from different countries and see, you know, how they live their lives and how hard it is for them or how good it is. It was just really nice to see everyone and talk. But What's something about you that people would be, your, your fans, your followers in particular on social, would be shocked to learn? From someone like you who has really put it all out there, mm -hmm. what is something about you that would really surprise people? I don't know. I'm a low key of a gamer. A what? A gamer. Really? Absolutely. I grew up playing like a world. Oh, of Julie, you just had like 20 minutes of this interview. You, oh, you, yes. You had me at gamer. Yes. Gr grew up, you know, playing World of Warcraft, Frozen Throne. What? Yes, CS and everything. And I was playing League of Legends for a little bit. Oh, you are a gamer. Oh, yes. ADC Ash. Oh, yes, honey. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that is cool. So that's probably shocking, right? Like you'd see it like, is. oh, she's shopping and high mean it's all that. But no, when it gets I didn't, down. Well, I didn't see that on any of your, uh, you don't project that on anything I could have read or watched. Yeah. Later. I didn't see that. There's a couple videos, just like two videos on my YouTube channel of like League of Legends. I was about to start like a Twitch, but I was like, oh, I can't. Like, it's just so hard starting another platform. Oh, that's amazing. But I'd probably be making a lot of money on Twitch just in my bikini playing games. Like, hey, I think you probably <laughs> would, actually. Do you think, uh, do you still play? Do you, are you? No. You're too busy. I'm just way too busy now to, to play games. Do you have a console or anything in your home? Uh, no. That is a great answer to that question. You surprised you. I mean, that's very yeah, cool. Yeah, there you go. Um, games on my laptop. Before we wrap up, uh, just curious. Um, any big projects that you're working on right now? Any other things, you know, uh, aside from this short film, I really want everyone to see Lost and Found. And like I said, I'm going to make sure we put a, a link to it so that people can see it. Anything coming up that you can sneak peek that you can tell us about or anything you're working on? Um, so I am just starting a theater, actually. There's this thing called transcripts. Of course you are. Yeah. So I'm, I just got on board. They told me the other day. Um, so I'll be one of the cast of seven trans women in Vancouver. Um, wow. Basically, 71 stories from trans women all around the world. And we literally picked some scripts and we're going to start rehearsing and live theater. So um, that's a new venture. I'm oh, really Julia, that's amazing. I know, I'm excited about that. And when will, when, when on or abouts will that be out there? When can I come and watch? Um, March. Right on. In 2020, the new year. yeah. So we're just rehearsing right now and taking the holiday off and then really just going at it so there's oh, well, that I hope you'll bring the the cast and your your team back and talk mm -hmm. about that that's really really cool yeah that'd be really cool they would love that that's amazing transcripts yeah uh, transcripts so right. uh, Julie I want to thank you for coming yes. on the podcast you are just an awesome thank you fascinating person me. I think your, your your story is just incredible thank you um, please come back and do Storyteller yes. Studio again for us uh, ladies and gentlemen the eclectic and extraordinary Julie Vu thank you thanks so for much. being on the show thank you thanks for having me you're very welcome